This is the second video on the uh, countdown timer that you see here in its, all its glory. And basically in the previous uh, tutorial or video we talked about the numeric up-downs uh, which are also known as spin boxes and about the group boxes and the radio buttons and how they all work together. And now we want to get to what's probably a lot more interesting part which is what happens after you press the start button and as you know when you press the start button the values from the up down uh, boxes are translated and displayed in this label at the bottom and in order to do that we need a timer so we know they drag the button over by uh, selecting a button and dragging it over to the form and we do much the same thing with the timer we go down to the uh, component section and find a timer and drag it up to the form but it's invisible so instead of appear appearing in the form it appears down in the uh, component tray at the bottom of the screen this gray bar at the bottom and you can select a timer the same way you can select anything else and look at it in the properties pane and we renamed it to TIM for timer and then countdown which is a meaningful Hungarian notation name and then I changed the interval to 1000 the intervals in milliseconds and it defaults to 100 which means the timer would basically fire off if you will every 100 milliseconds or 10 times a second and what gets fired off is the event it only has one event and you can select events by clicking on the uh, lightning bolt in the bar at the top of the property pane the thing that looks sort of like a printed book page is the properties button and the lightning bolt is the event button and the one event is click so the way you go into the click event handler is the same way you go into all event click hand all event handlers is you double click either on the click or on the name here and when you double click on it it takes us into the event handler for the timer which gets fired off every interval and in our case an interval is a thousand milliseconds or a second so to get back to the uh, start button when you double click on the start button uh, the first thing it does is it checks the text in the start button itself which I won't really go into why it does that until the next video when I go into the end, end processing of the, uh, the countdown timer but basically it says that the text is equal to start then translate uh, the values in the uh, numeric up down into one number and this one number is a globally defined number of seconds and the way you if you have a, a variable like this and you want to find out where it's actually defined you can right click on it and go down to go to definition and you can see this is defined at the very top of the program to make it global to everything in the pro program which it has to be in order to work properly so if we go back to the button handler again it basically takes the value in the numeric up down hours box and multiplies it times 3600 and trust me on this 3600 is the number of seconds in an hour and then it adds that value to the number the value in the uh, up down minutes box and multiplies that times 60 which I'm sure you're aware 60 seconds are in a minute and then it just adds in the value in the uh, numeric up down for seconds so we end up with a total that's the total number of seconds that's specified in that box and then we take our uh, timer uh, component and do a start 
uh, method in order to start it working which means every second it's going to fire off its tick event. And in the tick event we have a lot of local variables to find. There's three local variables that are integers for hours, minutes, and seconds. And then there's a string variables that also correspond to hours, minutes, and seconds. And then there's an integer called n work. And it might have been better to call this n remainder in a way. But n work is good too and then we have a string that's to display and the display is the actual value that gets written to that large font um, label that we see get changed and essentially what we do is in the n hours we take the number of seconds that are in the countdown second global variable we we're just looking at and divide by 3600 so in effect we encoded the hours and now we're decoding the hours back and we take advantage of what's called integer arithmetic and that there's no a, a remainder an integer is always a whole number so if we divide this by 3600 and it's less than 3600 we're going to get a zero and the number of times more uh, 3600 will go into it will just be an integer in, in the hours uh, local variable. So basically if we say 1 hour 11 minutes and 11 seconds this is going to divide out and give us a 1 and then we multiply the number we got when we get did this division times 3600 so we recapture the number of seconds that we just got without the remainder and then we subtract the uh, number total number of seconds we subtract this number from the total number of seconds so what we get in effect is a remainder if it was one hour eleven minutes and eleven seconds the end work would have the number of seconds and eleven minutes and eleven seconds so we continue on with getting the minutes by dividing the end work which is this remainder we got by sixty and then we subtract that number we got the number of minutes which would say be 11. Uh, we multiply 11 times 60 to get the number of seconds in that and subtract that from our ongoing working remainder. That's where the work comes from. It's like a working value. And that'll, so we now have the number of minutes and we have the remainder when the minutes and the hours are taken out, which is the seconds. So we just set the seconds equal to n work. And then we do a translation of the string to uh, the string variables using the two string method of the uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. And we use a pattern in the two string of zero, zero, which greatly simplifies life. I used to do a whole conditional operator thing in order to get padded by zero. And then I realized all I have to do is a two string with a zero, zero pattern and say if the number is 1, this will be 0, 1. And if it's 11, it'll be 1, 1. And if it's 33, it'll be 33. In other words, if there's a significant value, it puts it in there. And if there isn't, it puts a 0 in there. So that works out perfectly. And when we want a number to always be the same length the way we want it to be when we display the, the string and the label. So all that remains really is to concatenate the hours string with a colon and the minute string with another colon and then the second string and we have the nice display value that we put in the text property of the large font label which is called label time display. And then we put it in a second place and that's the this.text and that this represents the form itself and the dot text is the label at the top of the form the title if you will so this also displays the changing time in the title and the reason that's useful to do is if we minimize this we can still see how much time we have left by just looking at the uh, bar at the bottom of the windows screen and see that changing which is really nice feature 
I figured out how to do that because I've seen other programs that did that and I really like them. So the final thing we do in the tick display is do an auto decrement on the number of seconds so it'll keep counting down. So if we actually run this and see how it works, if I put 10 seconds in here and maybe make it 13 and put a uh, say one minute in here and say five hours in here and then do a start we see it counting down and when the seconds zero out uh, the minutes will go down and when the minutes zero out the hours will go down and if we minimize this you notice it's changing in the title bar so we minimize this and you can see it's still ticking down even in the uh, the title bar. I have an auto hide title bar so it's a little tricky. It pops up a picture when I do it but you can see it's still doing it. So we could wait another 39 seconds and see if the hour changes. Maybe we should do that just to uh, to verify that it's working. I'll have to think of a string of patter to uh, make up this time. Notice I put the title of my website along the top. Uh, it's a little free advertising. I, I actually toyed with the idea of having a downloadable version of the EXE, but I don't know whether I'll do that or not. I, to be honest, I don't get enough views to really justify doing something like that. But the seconds are about to change. They're zeroing out, and boom, we're down to 4 hours, 59 minutes and 50 plus seconds. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I appreciate it if you'd subscribe.